At first glance, there's nothing unusual about the way the day begins in this city. But this is no ordinary city. Nobody lives here. This is Expo 92, and if you want to get into this town, you have to buy a ticket. The first visitors of the day run to get a good place in line at the big attractions of Expo 92. Japan. Kuwait. Australia. Indonesia. For six months, from April to October of 1992, here on this two and a half square kilometer site on the outskirts of Seville, Spain, Expo 92 featured nearly a hundred pavilions representing over 150 countries, international organizations, and corporations. More participants than any World's Fair in history. <laughs> These people are using the IBM guest services system. The guest services system was designed to help people have a better visit at Expo. This is a new kind of interactive multimedia system. It does more than just distribute information. Thanks to new digital technology, the system allows people to create information, like this multimedia postcard, or an electronic voice message. <laughs> So people could communicate with their friends or family anywhere on the Expo site at any one of the 33 guest services system kiosks. The guest services system offered a variety of services. Multimedia features like the electronic walk and multimedia stories provided information about Expo. The electronic newspaper, the Expo Daily, had five sections of local and international news. The guest identification capability allowed the system to support a wide array of transaction-based services, as well as improving popular multimedia features like finger painting. Thanks to guest identification and the guest services system network, guests didn't lose their finger paintings when they walked away from the touch screen. They could save their paintings in a personal file to return to the same finger painting at another kiosk or even on another visit to Expo. And guest identification supported the restaurant reservation system, the most ambitious transaction-based feature of the guest services system. The goal of the system is to allow people to either perform some actual task, like making a restaurant reservation, or sending a message to people, or simply to have fun, to do a finger painting, or take their picture, or record their voice. What I was trying to accomplish with the guest services system is to give people who probably had no experience with computers whatsoever an inviting way to explore a computer system without even realizing it was a computer system. It was not our intention from the outside to make this look like a high-tech computer system but rather to make this look, if you will, more like a video game or more like something that was, that was both fun and useful and easy to use. So from the outside, what you see is a very simple design with a screen and a microphone and some speakers and a camera. And on all the high-tech elements are hidden inside the kiosk and, and, in fact, inside the computing system. There was a lot to see at Expo, and there were a lot of people. The average daily attendance was a quarter of a million, but on some days, there were over a half a million people here. And with temperatures often rising above 100 degrees, most people wanted to have a pretty clear idea of where to go and what to do. So one of the first things many people did when
Each of the 33 kiosks contains seven guest stations. The computing power for each guest station was provided by an IBM Model 95 with 16 megabytes of memory and 1.2 gigabytes of storage. The primary interaction device is a 6091. It's a 19-inch display with a touchscreen overlay, 1024 by 1280 with 256 colors. Now the video capture in the system consists of three components. A CCD camera attached to a video capture adapter in the computer. Second, a computer controlled tilt mechanism, which is adjusted so we can take pictures from a three foot kid to a six foot six inch adult. And the third is a computer controlled lighting system so the guests can take their picture in the bright daytime or at night. Now music and voice messages were accomplished using the M-Audio audio capture and playback adapter connected to speakers and a microphone. The other input devices, of course, are the ticket readers. The um, daily ticket and three-day ticket reader, which is a magnetic stripe reader, um, and the smart card reader, which we use for season passes and for the uh, staff badges, uh, which are smart cards, meaning they have a chip mounted on the card, which provides information about the user. Each guest station at each kiosk was linked to a kiosk server by token ring. Um, part of what's made this ambitious a project possible um, and what provides a lot of the functions is the fact that everything is tied together. All the PCs are communicating with each other. Um, when you simply bring an image up on the screen, it may not come from the machine that you're working on. It may come from any of four others within the kiosk. The eight machines in the kiosk are split in half, with basically each half serving as a team um, and also serving as backup for the other team in case a machine gets damaged for some reason. Um, and then, of course, you've got the network connecting back uh, to our central control room, which provides the guest profile information, provides communication from kiosk to kiosk, so that if you save a message at one place, you can pick it up halfway across the site or on the other side of the site. The 33 kiosks of the guest services system network were connected by a 16 megabit fiber optic token ring to the central kiosk control facility. The guest services system was a large network of small stations. The hub of this network was the central kiosk control facility. The function of the CKC was to manage and monitor information generated by the guests who were using the system and also to make sure that the system and the network were operating properly. The single key technology that enabled a transaction system instead of a static information system, of course, was the connection by token ring of all the guest stations to the CKC and from the CKC to each other so that people can have messages that are sent at one kiosk and go to another kiosk in any remote part of Expo and retrieve that via the CKC. So the, the connectivity we have here has really enabled uh, a quantum leap in the kind of services uh, that we're able to offer. Profile servers send and receive data to and from the guest and restaurant stations. The bridge computers connect the token rings in the CKC to the token ring in each kiosk. The hot kiosk is a duplicate system standing by ready to replace a failed system in the field. What we're looking at here in the CKC is one of our key applications, perhaps the key application of the CKC that helps us maintain our awareness of both the up and down status of all the machines in the, in the site and uh, some information about which functions are being used more or less than others. It's a real-time display, so what, what you're seeing in this sort of dynamically changing screen is the activity of the several hundred users that we have right now interacting with the system. You see various words here like paint, which means someone is making a finger painting, or messages indicating that someone is sending a message to, to another person on the site. What we see in the screen 